guys welcome to fun learning in this video we are going to discuss about the kinematics of the hip joint complex with no further delay let's get started first let us discuss about the motion of the femur under acetabulum your hip joint has totally three degree of freedom which is nothing but flexion extension abduction adduction medial rotation and radial rotation right flexion and extension of the femur occur from a neutral position as an almost pure spin of the femoral head around the coronal axis there is something known as arthrokinematic movement and they are totally three in number which is nothing but spinning rolling and gliding okay now if you are going to perform flexion and extension from a neutral position spinning is the only arthrokinematic movement which is going to take place between the articular surfaces the head spin posteriorly in flexion anteriorly in extension but if you are going to perform flexion and extension from some other position for example if you are going to perform flexion and extension from the abducted position of hip both spinning and gliding is arthrokinematic movement that is going to take place between your articular surfaces abduction adduction medial rotation radial rotation both involve spinning and gliding of the articular surfaces now let us discuss about the range of motion and the structure that is going to limit that particular motion in detail flexion of the hip is generally about 90 degree with the knee extended and 120 degree when the knee is flexed so that passive tension in the two joint hamstring muscle group is released now what is the function of quadriceps muscle which is nothing but hip flexion and knee extension if you are going to perform hip flexion along with your knee extension both the flexion has to be done by your quadriceps muscle right the range of motion of the flexion of hip is quite lesser when this motion is accompanied by your knee extension whereas if you are going to perform hip flexion along with your knee flexion the range of motion is quite larger when compared to the previous situation as i said because the hip flexion is done by your quadriceps muscle whereas knee flexion is done by your hamstring muscle the range of motion of hip flexion along with knee extension is 90 degree whereas the range of motion of hip flexion along with knee flexion is 120 degree okay hip extension is 10 to 30 degree when hip extension is combined with knee flexion passive tension in the two joint erectus femoris muscle may limit the movement abduction it is uh, the range of motion is nothing but 45 to 50 degree and this movement is limited by the gracilis muscle adduction the range of motion is nothing but 20 to 30 degree and this motion is limited by the tensile fascia lata and the iliotibial band medial and lateral rotation the range of motion is about 0 to 45 degree motion of the pelvis on the femur whenever the hip joint is weight bearing the femur is relatively fixed and the motion is produced by the movement of the pelvis on the femur now let us discuss about the anterior and posterior pelvic tilt this movement that is anterior and posterior pelvic tilt occur around sagittal plane and the coronal axis now let us discuss about the anterior and posterior pelvic tilt which occur around sagittal plane and the coronal axis okay so this is a normal position this is anterior tilting and this is posterior tilting normal position the anterior superior iliac spine and posterior superior iliac spine is aligned horizontally right same the anterior superior iliac spine is aligned vertically with your pubic symphysis The anterior and posterior tilting of the pelvis on the fixed the femur produces hip flexion and extension respectively. Hip joint extension through posterior tilting of the pelvis. During posterior tilt of your pelvis, your pubic symphysis moves up, whereas the sacrum moves closer to the femur. Okay, so during posterior tilt, what happens? Your pubic symphysis moves up and your sacrum moves towards your femur. During anterior pelvic tilt, what happens? The anterior superior iliac spine moves anteriorly and inferiorly, whereas the sacrum moves away from your femur. Okay. So during posterior tilt, what happens? The pubic symphysis moves up, whereas sacrum moves closer to the femur. 
During anterior tilt, what happens? The anterior superior iliac spine moves anteriorly in, in and inferiorly, whereas sacrum moves away from the femur. Now let us discuss about the rater pelvic tilt in detail. Now let us discuss about the rater pelvic tilt, which occur around frontal plane and anteroposterior axis. In normally aligned pelvis, a line through anterior superior iliac spine is horizontal. In unilateral stance, however, the pelvis often laterally tilt. The weight-bearing hip joint serves as an axis of motion. The non-weight-bearing hip joint pelvis either hike or drop. If a person stands on the left limb and his right pelvis is hiked, the medial angle which is going to form between a line that passes through the femur and the horizontal line which is going to pass through the anterior superior iliac spine increases. If this angle increases, then your left limb is abducted. Okay. In the same condition where if the person stands on the left limb and the right pelvis is dropped, the medial angle decreases. If the medial angle decreases, then the left limb is adducted. I hope so you understand this concept. Now let us move on to the, let us discuss about the rateral shift of the pelvis. If both the limb are weight bearing, the rateral tilt of the pelvis causes the pelvis to shift to one side or the other. With pelvic shift, pelvis can only drop. It can't hike. If pelvis is shifted to the right in bilateral stance, left side of the pelvis drop. Now let us discuss about the forward and backward pelvic rotation. The forward and backward pelvic rotation occur in the transverse plane around a vertical axis. During forward rotation, the non-weight bearing limb moves anteriorly from the neutral position and produces medial rotation of the weight bearing hip joint. So during forward rotation, the non-weight bearing limb moves anteriorly and medial rotation occur on your uh, weight bearing hip joint. The exact opposite take place in the backward rotation. That is during backward rotation, the non-weight bearing limb moves backward. That is posteriorly from the neutral position and which is going to produce a lateral rotation of the weight bearing hip joint. With this, I am completing today's video. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel. Stay home, stay safe.